What do you do when you are trying to sell something and your audience isn't buying it? So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video because I just recently launched something that is that had much fewer sales than I expected. And I want to share that lesson with you and some of the solutions that that I'm taking and that you may want to take if you're in that situation of you've invited your audience to sign up for something, to buy something, and they're not taking that action. And maybe they're even praising the the off the invitation. They're saying, oh, that's a great announcement or or wow, that what a great offering, what a great service or product, but they're not buying it. So what do we do? Okay, so here's what happened. Let me tell you the story and then we'll go into the actual solutions that you can implement in your business uh, now. Okay, so last Thursday, so this is pretty recent, okay? Last Thursday, I announced a new offering that I've, you know, trying out, testing out called the Getting It Done Sessions. These are focused sessions where I facilitate a group of people working on whatever project you bring to the session. Uh, you'll be working quietly. I'll be working quietly. Others in the uh, group will be working quietly on their own projects. You work on your project. I work on my project. In the beginning of the session, we'll do a little bit of coaching if you need to get unstuck on anything. And then uh, everybody shares um, what it is they're going to be working on for, for the next 30 minutes. Uh, we actually do the work and then we take a break, do some more coaching if needed, or you can continue working if you don't need coaching. And then we'll do another 30 minutes and then we'll celebrate at the end. So it's a two hour session. And I have seen from firsthand that this can be transformational for people because so oftentimes you're not building a business because you're literally not spending the time doing the productive things because you're scared. You're procrastinating either of those or you're not clear. And this get it done session is that's the purpose of these sessions is to get you no longer scared because you're with people, you schedule a time so you're not procrastinating, you're working on it, and um, that you you're clear on what to do because you get some coaching. So anyway, anyway, it's a great thing in, in for those of you who have tried it. Very few people have tried that kind of thing, and so uh, most of you were like, "Wow, what a great idea!" It sounds like a great idea, but none of you bought except for one of my clients who was incredibly supportive. She has been with me for, uh, worked with me for over a year. So she, and she's experienced this kind of thing with me before. So she knows it's powerful. Um, so so the, the lesson here is even if your audience is saying how great something is, the real result is whether or not they bought your thing, right? So words, don't often trans praiseworthy words don't often translate into sales into money for you because people want to be nice and people might think it's a great idea it's just that they don't have um, they 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 are not used to spending money on that thing yet it's it's something new to them they think it's great in theory but when it comes to actually spending money on it that takes a whole other um, sort of decision process okay. And so something that seems like a great idea, seems like a great offering, might still sell in the future if they see it often enough and finally they come to that decision. Visibility, repetition of a particular invitation will eventually change somebody's mind to say, you know what? And if, it's, if, it, if they thought it was a great idea, they will eventually buy, but they have to see it repeated and often enough. And it takes them time, their own organic process of coming to be used to the idea of spending money on this thing. For example, you know, therapy. I mean, let's just, let's just start with psychotherapy, right? Was only started in the past couple of decades, right? Less than 100 years. Before, psychotherapy, before people started buying psychotherapy, can you imagine the first psychotherapists that are trying to sell psychotherapy services? People around them were like, well, that sounds like a great idea, but why don't I just go to my friend or my, you know, my mother or my, your, you know, or, 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 you know, my pastor, right? Let me just go to somebody who can help me with mental issues and emotional challenges. Why do I have to pay you to do that, right? To sort things out emotionally or mentally. And so 
over over time, as more and more people saw that invitation and they saw it often enough, they started getting used to the idea that, oh, maybe it is worth paying a professional to talk to them to sort out my mental and emotion. And now, of course, it's normal, right? Psychotherapy is such a normal thing. Coaching, life coaching, is now in that state of the, the, the public getting used to the idea of paying for coaching. Because coaching is still a little bit more like, well, why don't I just talk to my friend? Why don't I just journal about it? Why don't I just, you know, listen to some motivational videos or whatever, or watch some motivational videos, right? Why don't I just think about it? Why don't I just go into the woods and think about this thing, right? Coaching, right? Well, coaching, of course, coaching is not just thinking about something and talking. It's also, you know, getting you to explore what your goals are and um, really helping you to figure out what your, uh, what actions to take, getting unstuck, all these things. Coach, coaching is a very wide field. But you see, so coaching is also people are now getting used to the idea of paying for it. And once they see someone else paying for it, they're like, oh, well, maybe it's okay for me to pay for it too, right? So any offering that is brand new in the world or in front of an audience needs the time and the repetition before the audience is going to spend money on that thing. Does that make sense? So when I was making that offering of the Get It Gun sessions, most of you were like, theoretically, it sounds great, but I can't see myself spending money on this yet, but you're not going to tell me that. You're just saying, wow, that's great because you want to be supportive, and I get it, right? And it's great. Thank you for being supportive, and I, I love that. Um, but I, am, I, I try to be as objective as I can when it comes to whether an offering, whether a product or service, is what the market wants. You are my market, but you're only my market when you spend money on, on something that I, that I sell. And if you don't spend money on it, it's simply you telling me, George, it may be a great idea, but I'm still not used to the idea of spending money on that. And, of course, there's also the question of price right? Price, of course, makes a difference. If somebody is asking you to pay them $10,000 an hour for coaching or therapy, then you'd be like, that's crazy. That's, that's way too much money, right? But if somebody says, oh, uh, I charge $200 an hour for psychotherapy, that's still a little bit high, right, in, in psychotherapy. I charge $100 for psychotherapy or coaching. Oh, well, that sounds reasonable. Great. You see, so pricing obviously matters. And when, you, when you're offering something brand new, the audience doesn't know what to pay for it. You don't know what to charge for it because it's not a normal thing in the market yet. So naturally, you just have to test what the price is. And so I charge, I'm charging $60 for three get it done sessions because I figure, well, something similar to what I'm offering uh, is you know you you all are some of you are buying courses from me and my courses are cur at this current time sixty dollars for three a three session course so I figure oh sixty I'll charge the same price as the kind of thing you've been buying from me but this get it done sessions it turns out is very it's different enough it's a separate category so see so here's another important lesson even an expert marketer like me is continually experimenting with trying new things that may not work at all may not work at all so don't look at successful marketing people around you and say well everything they sell must be working because it looks it looks great and their audience seems to be saying yes this is so cool but you have no idea the behind the scenes you really don't because i actually know some successful marketers and I know behind the scenes that some of their things are falling flat, completely flat, like almost nobody's buying it. But you can't tell from the front, from the public side. It looks like, wow, it's designed well. And people seem to be clicking like and click saying it's so great. You have no idea. So, so, don't so, so you think your thing isn't selling? It's not just you. It's those of us who are more advanced in the marketing, we try things all the time that fail, that fall flat. But we just don't tell you. I'm telling you because I want you to learn something from this, from, from, from these lessons, right? And thank you, Michelle, for your comment there. Feed, feedback is important, she wrote, when it comes to what we offer. Absolutely. So, okay, so let me get back to the what do you do then? Okay, what do you do? If you're offering something, people aren't buying. So the, the, the thing to do, the, the overall idea is you've got to try offering something else, right? 
you, you've got to experiment as quickly as you can. This is something that I've noticed a lot of you, I wish you, you would do. Because I, I notice a lot of you are taking a long time to, to, to work on something before you present it to your audience or present it to the world. And then you get devastated, naturally, because you worked on a long time. You get devastated if not enough people buy or nobody buys. And of course, I would be devastated too if I were you because I worked so long on that. So I try to experiment quickly. The get it done sessions, the idea came to me and I launched it immediately the next month without, without too much work. It took me a few hours to put the web page, to think about it, put the web page together and to offer it to just a few hours. Not, not too much wasted time, right? I think it's a great idea, you know, and, and eventually I'm going to keep trying it occasionally until you get used to buying it. You get used to the idea. Oh, maybe I should pay for focused working time. Maybe, maybe that makes sense. Right. So, so, um, anyway, uh, so you've got to try something new. So what I did was I allowed myself after 24 hours, one person bought who happened to be a very supportive client. Not that her sale, her purchase doesn't matter. Her purchase is also a vote. But if only a few supportive clients buy something, obviously I can't make a living doing that at $60 per sale, right? So at $60 per sale, it's got to be a lot of people buying it for me, for it to work financially for me. So that's why her vote is, I'm grateful, but it's not a legitimate vote to have enough sales to make it work. Right. So after 24 hours of one sale, I knew now you might say, George, why don't you wait longer? Maybe you just, you know, the, the, the sessions are still two weeks away, George. I mean, why are you judging it so fast? Because I know based on the regular promotional um, cycle that I have that 24 hours is a great early sign for whether an offering is going to work. Let me explain. So let me give you the actual example. Right. After 24 hours, one sale from a, from a Supportive client, not enough to make that, that offering scalable enough to make it work for me okay, financially. So I gave myself a couple hours of wallowing in depression. <laughs> okay, Still, like, you know, even somebody like me, successful marketer, I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, I know I have so much to learn, but some of you see me as a successful marketer, so I'll let you, I'll let you keep, that, keep that perception, right? Um, even as a successful marketer like me has failures all the time. Not all the time, but sometimes. And yes, I, I too get depressed sometimes. So I allowed myself those few hours of being down. It's okay. It's natural. It's a natural human reaction. And you know, I, I go for a go for a longer than usual walk. I, you know, journal a little bit maybe and I just think, ah, oh, it's too, too bad, too bad, you know, a little bit of regret that didn't work. Right. But then after the few hours of depression, after I allow myself that. I bounce back as quick as I can. That's what I want you to do too. I want you to bounce back as quickly as you can instead of wallowing because wallowing doesn't help anybody. It doesn't even help you, right? It doesn't help you. You've got to stop the thought of wallowing as soon as you allow yourself a couple hours. It's okay. But then after a couple hours, you stop the thoughts. That's enough. Thank you. You know, wallowing thought, depressive thought. I know you care about me. That's why you're so sad. I know you care about me. That's why you're regretful. I know you care about me. That's why you're frustrated that you made the offer that didn't work. Whatever the emotion is, thank you for caring about me enough to have that negative emotion, but it's enough for now. Let me now try something new. Because the market isn't judging you. It's not that your audience isn't going, you're not valuable to me. That's why I'm not buying from you. You're, you as a person are not valuable. And that's the mistaken thought that a lot of us make people aren't buying therefore i am not a valuable person in the world that's nonsense okay it is so far from that people aren't buying it means that thing okay that particular offering said in that way didn't make sense to them it wasn't valuable for them it's not you you are an infinite source of offerings remember this you have an infinite amount of ideas within you for what you could offer the world and to your audience infinite amount who who is to judge how many things you could create nobody can judge that i can't judge that all i can believe that's true about you is you have an infinite number of ideas within you you just of course need to give it time for those ideas to come out right so okay so after those few hours of following i allowed myself 
I then, I then said, okay, I'm going to make a decision. I've got to make something work in August because it's not that, you know, thankfully I have a, I, you know, it's not like I, I have to make it work or I'm going to be on the streets, right? I'm homeless. No, but I do have certain goals for myself that I try to keep. I have certain financial goals every month that the financial goals isn't like I, I'm chasing money. I, I love money. It's not that. I, I thankfully have a little bit of buffer from my successes over the past few years, but I keep those financial goals to keep myself experimenting and keep myself serving you in ways that are valuable to you. Okay. I know what's valuable to you when you spend money on something that I sell, right? Then because that's what the market is, right? That's exchange of, of, of value. So I'm like, okay, okay what am I going to experiment with next? I allow myself a couple hours of depression and then I bounce back right away and offer you a, a new course. So, and you saw it. I, I just offered it uh, yesterday. Well, I, you know, Thursday, if, you know, Thursday, I, I made the get it done sessions offer Friday, uh, 24 hours later, I was depressed. Right. And then I allowed myself a few, but then Friday afternoon I said, all right, I'm going to work on, um, I'm going to, I'm going to offer something on Monday. So then I, I put this, put together something new on Friday afternoon. Okay. I asked some feedback from my clients, um, gave them a few days to give me feedback. And then Yesterday on Monday, I offered it to you a brand new course for the month, you know, your core message, et cetera, et cetera. And within 24 hours of that new offering, I've already gotten five sales. Okay. Now, five sales is not enough to, you know, feed me for August, but I know that that five sales is going to multiply to, to 50, or maybe 60, uh, something like that. And of course, I don't live on you know, $60 times 50 is $3,000. I can't live on $3,000 in San Francisco, but with my other income sources, it's definitely enough. You know, that's just one of my income sources. So, so you see, so, so after 24 hours, right? One sale versus five sales. Once one offering had one sale from a very supportive client that said, you know, who that's not going to be scalable, right? Versus a, a second offering that had five sales after 24 hours. And I noticed the sales were from a few of them for from people who have bought courses from me before. Super grateful, and great. but a few of them were from people who haven't bought courses from me. So I know, oh, this is this new course, this new offering, seems to be scalable. So now, of course, I do the continue the regular promotion of emailing my list about it, uh, doing Facebook ads on this thing. So, 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 do you see? You have to pivot quickly when something isn't working. Don't think, well, let me try selling it for another six months even though nobody bought this thing. If people aren't buying it, it within 24 hours of enough people seeing it. So that's a question. What is enough people? For me, a thousand people seeing it is enough of a test. God, one, one sale after a thousand people seeing it in 24 hours, pretty good test, right? For you, maybe, um, maybe it's a hundred people seeing it, right? Thankfully, when we use Facebook, we can see how many people it reached, right? To reach a thousand people, got one sale, not gonna work. Um, so, okay, let me, let me kind of finish this video by giving you a couple of factors to test out. Well, how do you know whether or not something is working and it should be, you should stop doing it and try offering something new. Okay. So here are, here are a couple of factors. I'm going to write a whole blog post on this and I'm, I've already outlined it. So I'm, I'm going to share it with you. Um, are enough people seeing it? I've, I've started talking about that. I would recommend you, you've got to have at least a hundred people see something. Before you, you know, you get one sale, one sale out of a hundred might not be enough for you, but it might be like, well, that's pretty good. I can scale this to a thousand people seeing it. Okay. Um, for me, it's like if a thousand people see it, it should be at least a couple sales. Cause I know I can scale it past enough 5,000, 10,000 people seeing it so that it makes enough sales for, for me to make it worth my while. Right. So are enough people seeing it for a lot of you, not enough people are seeing your thing. That's why you're not getting enough sales. Like getting a couple dozen people seeing something or even a couple hundred, maybe that not, that's not enough people seeing it. So how do you get enough people seeing it? Are you, have you emailed your subscribers, your email subscribers? Have you emailed them specifically about the thing? And you usually need to email them at least once. I email my subscribers two times. Most marketers email their subscribers five to ten times for any one offering. I think it's, that's too salesy. That's my opinion. So that's why I limit it to two emails about it. Um, for you, you may, you may be used to doing two or three or four emails and that's okay. Have you emailed your people? Number two, have you asked some of your supportive friends and fans to help you get the word out? 
maybe you haven't done that. Okay, so that's that's the second one. Third is have you run a Facebook ad to your warm audience, people who are on your email list, who are surfing Facebook, who visit your website, who are surfing Facebook, who are who have engaged with some of your Facebook content. So Facebook ads. If you don't know how to use Facebook ads, I have a, I have a whole course on how to how to do that. Facebook ads to warm audience. Have you run a Facebook ad to cold audience to test it out, look alike audiences? Are you on Instagram? If you love using Instagram, have you run an Instagram ad for that thing? If you know how to use Google ads, have you done that? I'm going to be teaching a course on Google ads later this year if you're interested in that. And lastly, have you looked at reaching out to influencers, partners who could promote this thing for you to their audience if it's the right audience for you? That can make or break whether an offering has enough sales. That's how I really got started in the very beginning when I had no audience at all and I didn't know how to run Facebook ads. You know, in the beginning, I, I just approached people who had the right audience and you know, I, I struck up a conversation and, and made it really a good deal for them to share it with their audience, so influencers. So are enough people seeing it, number one. Number two is are the people who are seeing it used to buying this kind of thing? That's a real question, right? If you're selling something that's completely brand new, and your audience is like, I've never bought this kind of thing. I don't know anybody who has bought this kind of thing before. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how many people you share it with, and if nobody's used to buying this, then it's a brand new offering that they have to see for enough time. That means you have to make your money doing something else, and then just occasionally still offer this thing, knowing that enough people have to see it until finally you get one sale, and then two, and then five, because then word of mouth starts to happen, okay? so. It, now, how do you know whether something they're used to buying this kind of thing? Well, okay, let's go through a couple examples. A book, of course. If you're selling a book, people are used to buying books, so that's that's pretty normal. An online course, people are used to buying online courses now. It's getting more and more popular, so that's a relatively easy thing to sell. One-on-one -on -one services, uh, well, it depends on what kind of one-on-one -on -one services. <clears throat> For example, um, you know, I have some I have some some clients who are uh, who are working on selling self care coaching. Okay, self care coaching. Even though it's one on one, people are used to buying one on one services, psychotherapy, starting to used to buying coaching. But self care may be something that they're not used to spending money on. They're like, well, I want to. S I know self care is important, but do I want to spend money on that? Is it selfish to spend money on that? Right. So, if if it's if enough people have saw that offer, but not enough people are buying it then they still you need to make money doing something else or offering something else and still offer that thing and you know just occasionally so that people get used to the idea and then they finally they'll start buying eventually okay so are they used to it um and uh third factor is is it from a credible source meaning your audience whatever audience is is being sold that thing do they find you the seller to be credible well how do they find you credible well, and, okay, well, number one, <clears throat> is the page that's selling the thing well designed? And that, that is a real thing, okay? Is it nicely designed? Now, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to pay a web designer $1,000 to design a nice design page for you. I do it all myself for free. I just make it really simple. I have one single image at the top, you know, so I don't have to, because I'm not very good at choosing images. I just choose one image, and even the, the my recent images are not are like so-so, right? So I choose one image, seems okay. I ask my clients, do you think this seems okay at the top? And then the, the writing is not too wide. You know, when you look at a web page and the writing is like, whoa, it goes really wide. It's really hard to read. It's not well designed. So I try to make the writing somewhat narrow. And, you know, I, I try to make it not too dense, not the paragraphs aren't too long. So these are all little design things that you should think about, right? Um, is it easy to read? Is it is it not messy? You know that kind of thing. Is is it? Is there anything that's off about it? And you can ask some friends and some colleagues to give you feedback on it. Is something off about this page, or does it look relatively well designed? Again, it doesn't have to be a fancy fancy design. It just has to be clean, clean, easy to look at, you know, pleasant to look at. That's all. It doesn't have to have lots of images. Pleasant to look at, easy to. You know, the buttons are not way too big or way too small, right? That kind of thing. <clears throat> and and also in terms of credibility is have you been talking about that topic for long enough that the audience says i trust you on this topic so for example if i start suddenly start selling you an online course on how to do knitting you know george 
you've never said and created any content about knitting. How do I trust that you know how to do this thing? How are you credible as a knitter? Right. <laughs> so, but I've been talking a lot about the course, the, the kind of things I sell courses on. So that makes sense to you. You're like, oh yeah, I can trust George on that stuff. One way to shortcut the credibility element is to have a promotional partner, somebody who has an audience that already trusts them. If they sell your thing, they say, oh, George is really credible in this area. You should trust him on this. And that word of mouth, that kind of promotional partner can, can really shortcut the credibility. And they'll say, well, I trust you, you know, Bob. And if Bob says George is credible, then maybe George is credible and I should go ahead and buy it. Right? So that's third is credibility. Fourth is at the right price. I've already talked about this. It needs to be something uh, at a price that, um, the audience says, yeah, that makes sense that this is being sold at that price. Uh, Captain here asks, what if it's not within people's budget to purchase within 24 hours, but they would be able to buy a week later? Uh, that's a good question when it comes to something that's higher price. I would say if something is several hundred dollars or higher, then there is a, you know, 24 hours might be too soon within the announcement. But if something is under $100, it's generally kind of an impulse purchase for, for most people. And you should see some sales within 24 hours. But yes, you're right. Several hundred or several thousand dollars within 24 hours if the audience, and if the audience is big enough, then there's something wrong. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, it's sort of like this balance between price and enough people seeing it and, and the timing. But you're, you are right to think about that. Tanya asked, do you think offering a free discovery session is a good idea or should I offer paid coaching at the same time uh, in the beginning with no clients yet? Um, no, I, I think, you know, I, I talked about this in a different, um, in a different blog post, uh, about sampling, you know, people need to sample what you do, uh, before they decide to, to buy it. Uh, you, you do parenting coaching. Okay. Parenting coaching, um, is starting to become a thing. It's still kind of new, right? Life coaching in general is kind of new The people are, ah, should I pay for this thing? I, I mean, I have the money. But should I pay to talk to somebody about thing if they're not a licensed psychotherapist? So parenting coaching is starting to. So I think, Tanya, for you, you need enough credibility with your audience. You need to talk about the stuff enough. You need for them to see your content enough to say, you know what, Tanya knows what she's talking about. Does she? I don't know. But I need to see her think, talk about parenting enough to say, yeah, she seems like she knows what she's talking about. Maybe it's worth paying her now for this kind of thing, right? So I think partly... In the beginning, it's about credibility, building up the content to people. People go, oh, yeah, you seem to know what you're talking about. Um, and then, of course, I think a sample discovery session is, is helpful. I would recommend that. Uh, some people don't believe in free discovery sessions. I think they are beneficial. And I've noticed that when it comes to discovery sessions, the longer the discovery session, the more people tend to say, you know what, I do want to work with you. So if you can possibly do 60 to 90-minute discovery sessions for free per person, they're more likely to sign up with you. 30 minutes might be too short. At my level where I have a lot of credibility with my audience, I only need to do 30 minute free sessions. By the time someone comes to a 30 minute free session, they're already sold by the way, right? So it's 30 minutes is kind of more confirming that things are the right fit. But in the beginning, you need to do longer discovery sessions. That's my, that's my recommendation. Okay, so enough people, something they're used to buying, a credible source uh, at the right price, and they need to see it often enough. Even if it's something they're used to buying, they still need to see it a couple times before they buy, right? It's usually the case. So maybe in the beginning, you'll get a few sales, 24 hours, but then those who didn't buy it, they just need to see it two or three or four times or need to see it in different places. You emailed them about it. They also saw it on Facebook, right? Even two places is helpful for them to say, oh, yeah, that's right. I, I should buy this thing. I, I do want to buy it. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. This has gone a bit longer than I expected, but I hope that you know hearing these stories and hearing about uh, these factors will help you to make your next offering or your future offerings more successful. So uh, thanks for those who were able to join me here, uh, Captain, Tanya, and Michelle. I see your comments here, um, so thank you so much. And I, um, any questions you have for me, you know that I'm always welcome uh, to them. So just comment below if you have any questions uh, or if you want me to make a video about something in the future, you just post it on my page uh, or privately message me if you like. So have a great rest of your day. I wish you uh, success in your future offerings 
and remember these things all matter and it just takes time as well for for people to get used to you and then to to buy from you so thank you elisa for your comment there as well bye everybody